people. There's no countdown anymore. You're going to have to join me. Hey, again, it's Andy over at Falco Canine Academy. We are here at Falco Field in Brea, California. I didn't get a countdown like I normally do. It used to count 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, but it's, um, <laughs> they don't have it any longer. So um, we're going to talk about a few things here, but I just wanted to let you know where we're at. We do our pet dog training here. Um, we're transitioning from the intermediate class to the basic class, I believe, right now. Um, and I'm not sure if the angle uh, – let me look. I'm going to have to go off camera here for just a second because I'm not sure – if you can see, yep, over there on the right-hand side, you can see them lining up in the shade. Um, so they're just getting ready to get started. I think this is day four or five. Five? Day five of our training? You, <laughs> you don't know? No. Anyway, uh, they've been going at it for a while. Um, uh, but this is, again, Falco Field. Uh, FlexFit is the name of the company. Uh, they make baseball caps. They, they make our baseball caps. Can you throw me your hat really quick? So they make all of our baseball caps. You've probably seen them. A lot of uh, professional players um, uh, wear their caps. Uh, they're um, a Korean company here in the United States and uh, make a great, great product. And so uh, this is their field. Um, and they allow us to come here every Saturday and Wednesday night and use it <clears throat> for dog training. So we're very thankful for them uh, and their attorneys for allowing us to work here because that's usually the thing that gets in the way when you're looking for places to train, that um, <clears throat> there's some liability issue or something like that that think people become uh, concerned about. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, there is a link for a uh, Train the Dog Trainer webinar where we're just going to begin to get started on the new program that uh, Aldo and I are uh, putting together uh, for trainers. And you're not going to want to miss it because it's a whole new uh, – it's, it's new – I'm telling you. I know there's nothing new in dog training. You've heard me say that before. But there's now going to be something new that's going to blow you away uh, in regard to uh, dog training. It will make you a star <clears throat> if you want to use our uh, program that we're coming up with. And in this webinar, I'm going to talk to you about how you can be a part of the beginning stages of this particular uh, project we have going on. And you can begin to release it to the world and change lives, not only, people's, uh, not only dogs, but people's lives also. So that webinar is uh, uh, April 2nd. And then... Um, Oh, I've been doing some stuff with some CBD oil. I've been testing it on myself, and I've seen some great uh, progress in my sleep. Uh, my blood pressure is lower, than, is, is lower than it ever has been before in my entire life. Um, anxiousness that sometimes I get from the years as a police officer. Uh, you know, I played sports, hockey, football, uh, pole vaulting. Uh, all of that, as, uh, as far as I can tell right now, for the period of time that I've been taking it, has, um, has gone completely away. And I've been reading about how it affects dogs. The reason for me bringing this up is that obviously it has to do with dogs, that the CBD oil has been great, uh, and there's great testimony uh, in regard to people who have given it to their dogs and seen a reduction in uh, stress-related issues and um, fear-based behavior. And so uh, also skin and coat and overall health and that kind of stuff, uh, it's uh, some really great testimony has been uh, coming out in regard to CBD oil. So look for me to begin to um, post some of that stuff and where you can get it. I've tried a couple different products and uh, researched a couple different products. I've settled down on onto one uh, company right now that it seems to be doing a, the best job that I can find right now in development, in research, in uh, coming out with new products and that kind of stuff. And so uh, I'll be telling you a little bit more about them uh, later on. Um, there's a Facebook page uh, that you can go to called Today's CBD Oil. Today's CBD Oil. Go to that on Facebook and at least you'll get started. It's a brand new site, a uh, brand new Facebook page. So uh, we're going to see what they're getting ready to go out to do out there. And if it is week four or five, they're probably uh, going to be working on the recall. Uh, I, I don't know. I wasn't here last Saturday, so I'm not sure if they, they did that last Saturday or not. Uh, actually, we got Derek coming here. I'm going to ask him uh, what it is that we have going on uh, today. Hey, Derek, what, what day is this for this class? Week five. Ah, I was close. Uh, week five uh, is a great week because we're coming towards the end. We've gone through the sit um, on a stop. We've gone through a stay. Uh, when you leave with your right foot, the dog is supposed to stay. And we've gone through the heel where if you start with your left foot, the dog is supposed to heel. And those have already been done in, in, in weeks one, two, and three. And then four, we begin to do the recall. And five, we, this is when we really start to put it all together. We start doing meet and greets and that kind of stuff where um, people that came to us with aggressive dogs um, or dogs that have dog aggression issues, um, they, they won't, they, and in the beginning, they will never believe that at some point during the training that they'll be get to a point where they could actually approach another dog, have their dog sit, and then reach out and be so close that you could shake hands with the other person that has a dog themselves, right? In week one, nobody believes that they can get there in the matter of time that we get them there, and this is the day that we do that. If they don't start doing it now, she's probably explaining about how they're going to go about doing that, or she's explaining the down. We also talk about the down on uh, week five. So, 
um, you may be asking why it is that uh, we wait until week five to start working on the down, and that is because it, it can be one of the most, I don't want to necessarily say dangerous, but it can be the time that your loving dog will bite you, right? If it depends on that dog's um, uh, you know, feeling towards you as a leader, uh, it has to do with that dog's level of aggression, has to do with the breed of dog, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes along with it. But what I felt as I was putting the system together is that if we could get the, the, the sit uh, and the and the stay and the heal and really teach the dog at that point that we are really in charge and that we uh, deserve to be respected uh, in the sense that if you uh, feel when we're putting into into a down that you feel like we're not uh, to be respected that you know if we do it too early uh, we don't have enough of that in place so by doing it and saving it for later on it really helps with that understanding that up to this point we have changed the dog's mind about us changed his perspective of, of, of us as a um a leader and and so that is why we do it later because uh with police dogs i've seen it far too often where they try to do it down like on day one that they meet the dog and the dog turns and bites them or goes up the leash and bites them and uh, it's because it's they're not ready the dogs aren't ready their dogs don't know you well enough and don't respect you enough or since the time that you've had the dog, you've developed such a, a, a lousy relationship that uh, the dog does not uh, respect you, right? You over time, um, you have developed this uh, this um, uh, not enemy, you know, um, uh, inverse or uh, opposite uh, relationship that you want with the dog, and that is the dog believes that he's in charge, believes he's the leader, uh, and that is bad, right? So you can have the dog for six months and have that relationship going on, and you can still have the same result when you try to tell the dog down, the dog turns and bites you. So that can be a huge issue. Um, I'm going to come back behind the camera and go off camera again. And I think uh, good, because we have such a good background, you probably won't mind. But I want to see uh, who we have. Uh, we have Amy. Hello, Amy. Uh, we got Chris. Nice. If you have any questions, I'll have to go off camera every so often to, um, to see what they are. Because I didn't want to be backwards. I didn't want to have uh, my camera backwards. And sometimes when um, you do the forward-facing camera, everything looks backwards and it looks really odd. So, again, we like to really explain. Now, you can see there that Chris, uh, that, Chris, that Gina just, hi, Chris, uh, that Gina uh, is going into a lot of conversation. When we start going into these um, uh, behaviors where you're either going to meet and greet or you're going to down the dog or something like that where you're doing something that has the potential of going bad, we want to make sure that everybody is on the same page. Um, and there's no doubt that Falco Canine Academy over the years has been known um, for helping people with aggressive dogs. And so quite often... We get a few of those in our midst. Um, there are maybe one or two that I know that are fear-based aggression, and I don't think we have any dominant dogs or dogs that, that are in that, that, that spectrum of just nasty dogs. So none of those are in here now, or else they probably wouldn't be in this class. You never know. It just depends on where you know our relationship with the human that has the dog, whether they can handle it or not. Um, there's an interesting dog there. I don't know if you can see it, and we'll try to get a closer look a little bit later on, but there's a black, a large black dog over there, and it looks a lot like a, um, a Bouvier or a giant schnauzer, and in fact, it's a black Irish uh, uh, wolfhound, and uh, I haven't seen very many black Irish wolfhounds, and so that's interesting. There's always these breeds that come in so often that you just don't see. I saw a dog earlier that looked like a, a lot like an Irish setter, and, but it was a golden retriever that probably has... Some genetics in there probably, but I almost thought I saw the elusive um, Irish setter that I haven't seen for years in, I haven't seen the dog in years, period, right? Um, they'll show up every so often, it's kind of like uh, Chubacabra, right? You'll see it and you'll have a sighting every so often, uh, but I just haven't seen a lot of Irish setters over the last years. When I was a kid in the 70s and 80s, um, there were a lot more Irish setters, I believe, because uh, I actually wanted one. So, yeah, so they got the dogs in the down, and that is a, a good, good thing. Uh, another problem with the down is not necessarily just that the dog can bite you, but it is hard sometimes to get a dog to down next to another dog or in the proximity of another dog because, remember, downing or, or taking uh, the low ground is a sign of submission to dogs. And so um, it, it can be difficult, especially for some pit bull breeds or some German shepherd breeds, um, that they aren't downing not because they're trying to be disrespectful or disobedient. Is their, their genetics is telling them, no, I'm not supposed to lay down next to this dog that um, uh, needs to know that I'm in charge on this field or that I'm a dominant, right? It, it goes against their brain power. And so, again, that's where you have to teach the dog to hand everything over to you, where you become the leader, that this dog has no place uh, trying to pull that card on you because, oh, that's right, I forgot. I'm not the leader. You're the leader, and the dog can lay down and, and, and fight the, um, 
the, the self-talk that, hey, I'm not supposed to lay down. So it's really good to see. They're pretty close to one another. They're about five or six feet apart. And again, that is really, really important. Let me see if I can, uh, I'm going to move my camera so you can see a little bit better. Uh, let's see. Feel free to ask any questions. I will come back here every so often. Um, hopefully I don't drop my tripod. I'm going to go over here and we'll get a better look. Hopefully I'm not too annoying as I'm uh, bringing you closer. Oop. There you go. Hope nobody's getting sick from watching that video of the movement. <laughs> so this is a look that we don't get to give very often as far as a, a live training session. Uh, and you won't see very many trainers do it either because uh, uh, they just don't um, uh, like to take any risks that something might happen. But I'm all about uh, that. Uh, if something is going to happen, we want to show you how you can resolve the issue and how you can fix it. Um, there are some things that we're going to be changing in our Train the Dog Trainer program uh, that you will see that you see now that probably won't be happening um, later on once we introduce the, uh, the, the, the newer system. It's just going to be updating some of the things that we already do. And sometimes we like to watch people figure out how to do it themselves. And then once we've watched them try to figure out how to do it themselves, we then tell them how they can do it better. You know, there's one thing that's powerful that I've uh, taught all of our trainers. And I'm going to go back here again, and maybe it's, it's better that you're watching what's going on. I've told all of our trainers that, you know, sometimes you want to see people do it their way and make the mistakes so you can see what they're doing when you're not around, right? If, um, if you're at training... Um, and you've all probably done this too, where you've done training where when you're in front of the teacher, you do it the way they want it, and then when you're at home, you do it somewhere, something, you do something entirely different. Right? And so it's hard for a teacher to try to fix a problem if when you're there, you're doing it her way, right, or his way. And then you go home and do it something differently, and then you're having different results. It's because you're not doing it the way that you're supposed to, right? And so here on training, you'll see us let people kind of struggle with their dog just a little bit so that we can identify the problems we need to fix later on. So uh, when you see somebody doing something that kind of makes, maybe makes you uncomfortable, if you're a trainer, uh, know that some of that has to do with that. We're letting them do that. As long as they're not hurting the dog, per se, or causing any injury or anything like that, um, we kind of let it go on so that we can see that they're not going to get the results uh, that they need by doing it their way, that if they would just listen to us <laughs> and do it the right way, uh, they'll have better results. And so there's a little bit of that that goes on from time to time, especially with our uh, customers who are a little bit uh, frustrating, right? We want to, sh to have them feel that, uh, you know, that, that it's just not working first. And then when we do it, it somehow mirac miraculously, wow, that's a tough word to say at 10 o'clock in the morning, um, miraculously working, um, uh, you know, when we do it. And so it'll just show the power of, you know, our, our time of doing this, the 30 or 40 years that we've been doing it. If you had us, if you had Aldo and I together, it's like a, a thousand years of dog training between the two of us. Um, and, uh, Gina's experience with all the dogs too. So, and, uh, of course, Derek. So you put all that together, we, we have seen something. So now you see this handler, uh, struggling with his dog. Again, that's kind of the process of, of seeing how would you, how do you handle this when you're at home? Show us. And then now you see Aldo explaining uh, how to do it differently. So very, very good stuff. As soon as Aldo's not busy, I'm going to bring him on camera so um, we can have a, a conversation about um, what it is that we're going to be doing. So this may be one of those dogs that... I was gonna, I'm sorry, it's hard for me to watch and talk at the same time apparently. So no, first we have to show the dog what we want. This is what we want to dog. We want this, right? So that's so um, uh, important so the dog understands. Like sometimes people train dogs and then they expect that the dog just knows what they're talking about. When in fact, they don't, right? Dogs don't speak English. They don't understand English. They don't um, understand German or French or anything like that. And so um, sometimes we have to simply show them by placement. Here, this is what I want you to do eventually and watch what happens when you get down there. We praise you, right? And... Oh, and that was much better. See, I'm getting a little bit better. The dog was more willing to get in that position. By the looks of this dog, I'm sure one of the issues is that he doesn't feel comfortable laying down around a bunch of other dogs. He feels uh, that it's kind of uncomfortable to be in that position around a whole bunch of dogs. So that, that's um, quite often the issue. Hey, Aldo. 
Um, and so that uh, is just something you got to be aware of when you're when you're looking at dogs, the, the certain personalities and that kind of thing, uh, that you understand that dog as opposed to what worked with a different dog. This dog has these issues going on. The other dog did not, and that's why you don't have to worry about it. How are you? Fine, thank you. <laughs> you're very welcome. Uh, we I was watching you working with that gentleman with that dog and talking about all the different possibilities of why this dog is struggling with the down. Sometimes dogs don't want to down when they're near other dogs because that position to them is that they're showing submission to the other dogs. Uh, or uh, there's a relationship tr problem between the human and the dog that needs to be understood. Or the dog just doesn't know, right? Yeah. So what, what kind of things were you telling uh, him to help him with his dog? Okay, well, one thing important, I, I, I was trying to teach them about the channels of the communication because he, he is using the negative reinforcement and force, but the, the dog uh, doesn't eat, she doesn't want treats, he, she, could, she has good uh, one channel of the, the, the communication that is positive way for, it's so important for to say her, yes, I like it, can you see? And now I, when, I, when we get a little behavior for one moment, I told her, reward her, maybe no treats, but we can use another treat, another rewards that's uh, pets, affection and freedom. After she gets freedom and the owner improves the motion, because another thing is the, is the um, coherence about the rewards, because some people say good, some people say no. It, when you say good, you need to be happy, because the, the dog is, is, is learning about your body language. If the, dog, the, the owner needs to say good, but good girl, and play. You, know? you need to be a little clown. Because it's so important for your dog, for the communication about the good thing that you want from your dog. Yep. So I, um, uh, I, I understand the part where you actually have to get the dog in the position that you want, right? You have to do it however it's done. I know some people have a problem with doing a, a leg sweep or whatever it is. is. Is there a technique or is there something that's important to know about getting a dog into position like, you know, it, it should be not not forced yeah. to the point where you scare the dog? What's, what's, what do they need to know about getting their dog in the position to show them what you want first? Yeah, the, the pro obviously the problem, the problem, the, the bone, the bone, the the bone between the dogs and the owner is no good for the reason the dog is is, is struggling, is, is showing stubborn behaviors because she's not comfortable when the owner is touching her. For the reason we need maybe we need to improve through the treats, teaching the down through the teeth, the, through the treats, because the dog when the owner is pushing the dog by, uh, down. You know, you, we have another another issue that is the opposite reflex. When you are pushing down the dog, the dog is pushing up. When you are pushing down, the dog is pushing up or forward, back. Can you see? Uh, we need to solve the problem. But the, the main problem, the main problem is uh, the bone. We need we need work improving the bone between the dogs and the owner, so the dogs be. Uh, uh, be relaxed in in the when the dog when the owner is near when the dog uh, when the owner is touching her is how she will improve the down. Awesome. So um, when you when you have a dog that doesn't like treats, um, it, it's not always that they don't like treats. Sometimes they just don't like treats in this moment. Yes. Right, the stress is too high and the treats aren't a draw. Yeah, that, that, that's a good point because. We say the dogs need to eat. When the dog doesn't eat, why? Because he has food, because he had, he, he had eaten before came, mm -hmm. uh, or the dog has socialization troubles, yeah. stimulation problems, has uh, submission problems, no? Or education problems. But, or illness problems. Sometimes the dogs, they are not eating because they have some, some illness. Okay, that is a test. When the, when the dog is eating, if he's happy, everything is good. When the dog doesn't want to eat, for us, in our method, is the, 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 the treats, the food. When the dogs are eating, we are testing the dog. If the dog mm. doesn't eat, we need to uh, ask why. Yep. In, this, in this question, we have some solution. Yep. And sometimes um, 
because the dog has a pinch collar on, he won't eat, right? The pinch collar is causing so much stress that he's so tense, like, I don't want to eat. You can some, sometimes just, if you have a pinch collar on or even a choke chain, take that off as one of the, the possible solutions. And then maybe the dog will, it won't happen at that second, but give the dog a chance to relax and kind of walk around feeling the flat collar instead. And then maybe that could be one of those issues. There's, there's a few different things that you could do. That is so, 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 so important thing, Andy, that you are telling us because uh, once one important thing is training emotions before the behaviors. And sometimes the pinch collar improves the behaviors but diminishes the emotions. And obviously, when the dog with the emotion, bad emotion, he won't eat. He won't eat. That was good. That was a good moment. We need, we need to write that down. Yeah, okay. sometimes, sometimes we're taking, we take, taking the, the pinch collar off, the dog is releasing, the dog is happy, and the dog is eating. And now the test through the food is working again. Now we are knowing, okay, the dog didn't eat because he, have, he had under the pinch collar. The problem was, in this case, the pinch collar, because the pinch, the pinch collar improved the behavior, but diminished the emotion. And hurts the relationship. Yes, obviously, obviously. The, you, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can build a relationship with your dog through the pain system, yeah. painful system. It, obviously, the pinch collar, we need pinch collar, we need to uh, give reaction, we need to put boundaries, we need to say no, we need to learn uh, about the no, yeah. put boundaries, you know, so it's so important in the dogs, but the bone, the bone, the relationship, the good relationship you can build through the painful system. Right. It'd be like me wanting to be your friend and going, hey, come with me. We're going to go like, come with me. Why aren't you my friend? Yeah. No, no, <laughs> As opposed to, yeah, it, come it with me. Right? When you, you are finding, you are, you, you, you are having the, your first day with the, with the woman or you are a woman with the, with, yeah. but you are selling the product. Huh? Yeah, right. You say you are smiling all the time. Yeah. You put a good perfume, good clothes. You are, you, are, you, are, you are showing the best part of your personality. Yeah. After, yeah. after yeah. You, will, you, you will show your real person. You see, but in the beginning, it's the same with the dogs. In the in the beginning, we can say no, I don't like it. That is bad. That's wrong. I give pain because the dog is thinking this man is crazy. You can see, I am, I am suffering because I am under stress, performing things that we we can, we, we will speak uh, before. But uh, you, we now we need to. Uh, Say yes. The dog's having some bad behavior. It's okay, no problem. We will fix with the time. We have time. We are training. We have eight, seven, or eight sessions. We have different levels for fixing the problem. In the beginning, the first things we need fix their relationship and create good channels of the communication. In the main channels of the communication, the communication is like in Facebook. In Facebook, you have the signal. You don't have the signal. Yeah. Yes, everything is good. In fact, for, for, for this reason, everybody is, is addicted, is, it has an addiction to Facebook because the Facebook is rewarding you all the time. Never is, is put in the hand. Because that is the second the psychology for involved in the new relationship, positive relationship, improving the relationship in this way is taking out the stress. Yeah. After, we will say, no, in this moment, maybe we can use Maybe the pinch collar is a good tool for to say many things mm. because it, it, uh, sometimes, you know, we have a strong dogs with, with, with owners, mm. no? Sometimes we have problems with uh, owners with problems, uh, healthy problems. We have a, a so strong dogs with so strong temperament dogs. You obviously, when you, we need to say no, they don't understand because they are so strong. Mm. They don't need to be so high. In this way, the pinch collar is so good tool, but for these particular cases, in this particular moment in the training, no before, less from the starting. Spectacular. What I liked was what you brought up about Facebook is that the, the human um, psyche and the dog psyche is really not that far apart. If we really were to look at it honestly, you know, what are we communicating to this dog? Right? Are we forcing him to be our friend? Or are we creating a friendly relationship? Right? Are we creating it? Right? Um, the other thing on Facebook is it has a, when it asks you to opt into something, it has yes and not now. And it's not yes or no. It's not now. And that's the same thing with a dog, right? We're going to say, I want you to be obedient, but no, I want to go pee on that tree. No, not now, right? It, the promise is that he will be able to, okay. but just not now. So that's really important. That's the same thing about what Facebook does and other uh, opt-in pages is that they're, they're not letting you say no. 
right? <laughs> that, you know, it's the promise in the future that maybe not right now is not the right time, but yeah. later on I will be ready to yeah. do that. Yeah, another thing, another thing, go to PP is, is a reward. Mm. Yeah. If the dog can understand that he's giving some behavior, good behavior, he will have that. Can you see? Yeah, I can play with this. Everything, everything that the dog wants is reward for him. Yeah. But one thing, important thing is you can, you can have the dogs around you through the real leash, met, uh, leather leash, or invisible leash. Mm. Our purpose is to have the dogs in the invisible leash because the dog is with me, beside me, because he wants to be beside me and yeah, close to me because I am his leader and my relationship with, me, with him is perfect and he is subordinated. Subordinated is, is respect and the respect is loyalty. He's, he will follow me every part I, I, will, I will be. Huh? Mm. When I have the leash, sometimes the people have the leash, the, the, the dog won't escape because the bone is so bad, the relationship is, is so, is, 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 has been destroyed, if the dog can escape because he's on the leash. If the people use the leash for training, but they need to understand the training is off leash. Obviously, we need the leash for safety because the dog, when they are coming, sometimes they are crazy, they are want to fight with other dogs, they, are, they want to bite other people. Obviously, the, the leash is, 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 is for safety, but we need to understand the dogs need to be close to the owner because he wants. We have a law that the dogs will do because he wants to do. If he doesn't want to do, he won't do. No? For this reason, to train your dogs in good behaviors, not only thinking in the bad behaviors. That's two ways. We need work in two ways, but that is more important. Good behavior, good reinforcements, positive reinforcements, rewards. For this reason, we have particular rewards. We know control of these rewards. We, call, we have control over all needs of the dogs. If we can use, PP, make PP urine is one. Yes. It's a need for the dogs. We can use like a positive, not negative. The, in our purpose is, okay, you, you are bad dog, you want, you want urine. In, the, in, the, in our system is, you are good dog, go urine. If the dog is, okay, I don't I, it's, it's, it's business to be good dog, Dan, be bad dog. Nice. That was good. And if, I can understand him perfectly, So, uh, but I, I, I've been around him a very long time. <laughs> so just in case. Um, are you excited about bringing these two systems that we've created over the last couple of years together into one? Uh, you seem to be uh, speaking about a few of the things that we're going to be talking about in the trainer program. Are you excited to bring a, a, a new program that we think, we both of us think is going to, just yeah, change the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I am so grateful for, uh, to you because you are giving the, the, this big opportunity. You, you have been working in dog training for many years. M more year, I, I have 20, 27 years, 20 years working in dogs. Maybe you are more, more, more time. Uh, you are the, maybe the most important dog trainer, Polish dog trainer in, in America. He, that is a main, you are so, so important people here. You have, you are so powerful for trying many things. If you are given the opportunity to engage my system to you, improving both systems. He, I am so happy because I, I make a revolution in, in, in Argentina. I have a little empire in Argentina. Many people is following me. They are sol we are sol we are solving in Argentina one thousand dogs per year. This is crazy number because we have a good method. And now with you joining our methods, we can do the same. The Argentina is a country. It's a poor country. It's a small country in comparison to United States. The United States is a big empire. We can we can change here. The, the complete the, the whole world for this reason when you are given the opportunity to engage my system with you if we together make a better system that both together we have the opportunity for to change the complete change of the relationship between dogs and the society if that is so so good for me i am so grateful to you thank you wow i i don't know <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I'm excited. This is going to be really good. Uh, Aldo's going to be uh, essentially in charge of a lot of the dog training part of this training, and I will be a part of a lot of the, the human part. Uh, together, we'll be doing some crossover because we feel strongly, both of us feel that uh, in our systems, 
that we've seen that people are also affected by our training, that it just does not affect them and their dog, that it can actually change their relationships at work, change their relationships with their husbands and wives. Uh, have you noticed that same thing, that people have come to you and said, you know what, what you taught me about the dog actually fixed my marriage? Yeah, <laughs> yes. Oh, okay, because what, what something, something important uh, is we are in the new age of the dog training, the new age. We, we uh, have spent the war, the complete war, has spent three different systems of, of the training, improved training by training. Every system has improved the last training, no? The last system. If we now, maybe we are facing the fourth system in the world, the new system. If the new system is the, the, the good thing, it's so science. It has science. We have explanation for everything. Obviously, we, are, we keep learning. We are going to the, 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 the seminars. We will bring people for, for train with them because we will take another system because we need to improve. But our system now is so, so, so in, the, in, in, in its foundations with science. We have many, many, I don't, I don't like to say all, no? Because all, to say all, sometimes it's escaping. But we say maybe the mostly answers for many questions about the people and the relationship with the dogs. That is a so complex system. If we can fix, it's a system. You can learn because it's the same. I, I was explaining to you about the Henry Ford. Henry Ford, he, Henry yeah, he didn't invent the car, he didn't invent the engine or the tires. He invented the system. Now we are not we are not inventing the training dogs because the, the human beings has been training dogs for uh, thousands and thousands of years. Maybe the dog trainer is the most antique uh, prof antique profession of the world. When the dogs, when the when the when the human beings make the the dog from the wolf, it has been dog trainer. Huh? They were dog trainer. Can you see that? But now we are taking. The dog training systems, we are, we are making science, we are having the, the solution, the answer for any questions for you in so simple way. We say it's A, B, C. You need to do A, after you will, see, you will do B, after you will see D, if the dog is ready. If the dog is not working in A, we have questions for to say what happened. We saw that we say that is the problem is here. The solution is here. The problem is here. The solution is here. We have branch, mm -hmm. branches, and this, uh, if we we work one other dog trainers, veterinarians, ethologists, psych human psychologists, no, it, everybody is is we we can involve them for working to your dog, working you for working the dogs of your customers because the method is not only for for pet training the the dogs uh, with the owners is is uh, the, the 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 system is so good for dog trainers in argentina many dog trainers now in, in america latin through the, the our fan page falco canine academia international we are we are having many dog trainers all dog trained instructor from police officers they are coming with us for learning our method. If they, after they have learned our method, they say it's fantastic. I understand many things after I do I did it, but I didn't understand. I did it because I had feelings for to do that. Now I have science. Science is, a, is in our hands for the, the next method involving our bot methods. Yeah. Wow, that was exciting. I'm excited about what's going to happen. Uh, and you brought up the, the point of, I don't, there's things that I've explained and I think even recently explained, well, you asked me, well, how did you know? How did you know to do that? And I go, I don't know. I just had the feeling. <laughs> I just know. I just know that that dog needs this. I don't know how yeah. I knew. Right? Ah! <laughs> Scared you. Yeah, the, 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 yeah that is it. That is a, uh, that, for this reason, now we can train trainers because now we have all it's the same in, in the university. You are you are learning in the university. They are giving science to you. You know, if we are having science for training people, if the people is catching quickly, because it's so hard to train feelings, but it's so easy to train knowledge. Can you see? We we are training feelings because the emotion is so important. But but now we have the complete knowledge. Awesome, Gina. Aki. 
we're gonna bring Gina over here, the, the ones you saw, you know, sneak attack. Um, tell us, uh, tell them uh, a little bit about what this class is, what we're doing here, and that kind of stuff. I'm gonna go behind the camera and see if there's any comments. Okay. okay. Ooh, I'm a little winded from that run. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the Falco Field, and we are uh, in our fifth week of our basic obedience class. So today they're learning the come command and the recall to finish. Uh, the come command is where a dog just sits right in front of you, and the recall is when they come to your heel and um, in an obedient position. Super fun. These are This is a great crowd. We have about 10 people here, puppies, adult dogs, um, all types of breeds. It's fantastic. I'm having a blast. Aldo's having a blast. Look at him. <laughs> Aldo said a, a few minutes ago before you got here that the dog training might be the oldest profession, and then somebody said, "Well, it's the second oldest profession." Two. Well, we know, yeah. but the <laughs> there's another one. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. Um, but uh, I would say animal training because they needed horses, right? They needed see the other things. So, but the dog early on became an alarm system for the, the tribes that were living and the, the nomads that were moving across the the earth at that time, and so they were an important part of our survival. And the wars too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lots of war dogs were created through uh, the need to have dogs help us in war. So, uh, anyway, it's gone on for a very, very long time, regardless of how old you think the earth is, because that's a whole other debate we can get on. <laughs> oh, gosh, <no. laughs> I know. I'm going to have a post about that in my private page. Um, our, how do you, we've talked to you a little bit about what Aldo and I have been like, cooking up as far as training, uh, changing some of the system uh, and creating actually a new system uh, with your help, your and Derek's help. Uh, are, uh, are you looking forward to that or are you thinking, you know, let's just leave things the way they are? How do you, how do you feel? Uh, I invite change. I think change is great. I think as um, times go on, new things come, ar come around, um, uh, improvements. Uh, we, we have to adapt to um, the change in culture or just environment. And if, if somebody comes up and there's proven science or just um, from working with dogs that it works, we should be more than happy to use that method or use that tool or whatever it may be in our, in our training. And in the process, uh, uh, again, Aldo will be spending a lot of time with the trainers and, and taking them through the system that he's already tested. And we have him tested in South America first. Uh, <laughs> and it worked. I mean, it's fantastic. I, 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 get, I see postings all the time. I have to translate them off the Facebook page. But people love Aldo. They love how he trains. They love the systems he's put in place. And so I know it's going to translate over here to the United States. It's going to be fantastic. It looked like you were going to say something. Were you going to say something? Is it the the one thing the one thing I am thinking is explain to the people about the new method is psychoetology. Psychoetology is a un is a union of the psychology. No, they, they are working in the laboratory for uh, uh, training behaviors, studying behaviors, and the etology they are they are studying behaviors, but in the natural life. He, dur be, be, between du be, during many years they fight within them, but now. We can join them because we can have, when we are training dogs, when we are training dogs, we have the wolf, the behavior of the wolf, for explaining many things in the behavior of our dogs. And for this reason, we need to have uh, work in, in consistence about the, the, this behavior. We, we, need to go, we need to be another wolf, no? And that is good because in the first step, sometimes the position, we will put in the right position to the dog in the cosmovision of the owner. But the most important thing, we will put the owner in the right position in the cosmovision of his dog, their dogs. Huh? That is etology. But after, we have the psychology, is the classical conditioning, uh, co uh, behaviorism, uh, speaking about the real world reactions with many signs, many, many laws, many rules for, follow, for following them, for explaining to the dogs through the negative and positive reinforcement what we want from them. Both signs is good because after, in Argentina, one thing, some people, horse trainers, some psychologists, child, children psychologists, they are coming with me for my courses, for learning with dogs, psychology, some part of the etology, for after they are, they are applying this, this knowledge in their systems, they are in, in improving. For this reason, it's not only, we are not creating a new system only for dogs. The people are learning about, you, you are speaking about your murders. The people, uh, uh, you, can, you, can, you can train your children, you can, you can improve our relationship because we are speaking about cosmovisions that where are you stay, stand up 
in your in your in your entire environment now we will make changes in the environment through the people if that is so good awesome my arm was getting tired so i had to pull it in <laughs> but it was awesome i mean that's really good stuff i'm really looking forward to all this kind of stuff uh no uh no go ahead uh, <laughs> You know what, I'll hold it myself. You can, because I'm going to go look and see if anybody's Okay, coming. cool. Um, no, what I wanted to say is if you have been into our classes before, you know how awesome they are. And the program that we're all creating and, and brainstorming and putting together, <laughs> it's going to be 10 times better. So if you loved our program before, you're going to just think that uh, it's going to be like the icing on the cake. I mean, what else can we use? I mean, it's going to be amazing. The, our program is just going to be fantastic, amazing. Fantastical. Uh, Fantastical. <laughs> that rhymes with something. Yes. And Amy, Amy Felt says that your accent is beautiful, by the way. Right. Amy Felt's going to keep I her on. What? I, I, this, is, what, what? this is more important? Yes, it is. Okay, go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, 10 dogs at, at class with two trainers is about the max. If we have a, an additional trainer, well, actually, I forgot all those here. Three trainers <laughs> and, and possibly a fourth in the future. Um, we um, you know, want to make sure that we have the coverage to make sure that we can intercept any problems that might be creating and that kind of stuff. Uh, we have, a, a, I personally had up to 21 dogs in class uh, with five trainers. And in that case, sometimes we split up the classes into, into different groups. I like having the dogs all present it gives us more opportunity to work on behaviors that will only show themselves in this kind of environment so it's something that not people are uh you know in all the time when they're at home working with their dog under obedience so we we find that if we can work the dogs in extreme circumstances and still get good behavior it is helpful to the uh, owner to know what to do when there's minimal uh, you know, uh, distractions and that kind of stuff, and they can problem solve it pretty quickly. Um, have you noticed also, though, that there can be a difference between how a dog acts amongst other dogs as opposed one on one? Like some dogs can be aggressive one on one, but you don't see them be aggressive in a group because the dog is smart enough to know that he's outnumbered, right? Is, is, have you noticed anything like that? That's one thing I've noticed in some of the group walks we've done with dogs. Okay, here, one in the group class is giving the so control, control uh, environment. Mm -hmm. It that is so good for training because some, sometimes when we are working with the, the, the dogs in, in all environments, we don't have control about the, 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 the particular environment. And sometimes the dogs are barking so close or they are appearing so far, so quickly. Uh, is is giving an, uh, uh, is going off our dog. Yeah, our dog is going into to the shock, emotional shock. When the dog is in emotional shock because so shy or so aggressive, he can understand anything. We can we can we can use a, a collar. If he will under he will understand anything. Here is so controlled environment. Is we are approaching little by little the dogs. In the beginning, they are training, uh, in, in taking distance. After they are closer. He, in the same time the owners they are learning the skills for work yourself because after they have a homework for training in, in the week in the week little by little they are you they are training the, the dogs in their own environments the things they have learned here he, that everything is going good and in Falco we have some something so 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 good is the support in private class too Sometimes the, the owners, they have a particular environment they can, they can face for themselves. For this reason, we are giving the support going to the, the private, in the private class mm -hmm. because we have a bunch of the trainers. We have many trainers. We are working here together. In the week, we have different times. We, we can go any location. We can have a long distance. We are working through the online, through the, your webinars. We are giving them many supports we are, because we are training dogs, but more important things, we are training people. Yes. All right, this has gone on for a really long time. I'm going to land this plane for right now uh, and uh, go back to uh, viewing what's going on there and, and just kind of paying attention to what the people are telling us, that kind of stuff. Uh, we have return ease. I, I saw somebody in our class that was one of my students when I was still teaching the pet class from about 10 years ago, and she's here now with a new dog, and uh, the first place she thought of was coming here. So we must be doing something right, uh, and we've been doing it again for a very long time. Just because you've been doing something for a very long time doesn't mean that it's great, right? You could be doing something crappy, for 30 years <laughs> and not making a difference. But somehow we've been around, we've had positive results, we've had dogs that were on their way to being euthanized uh, and come to our training and then be a happy member of the family and in some cases become things like dock diving dogs or um, you know, mascots around an, an office where in fact in the beginning the dog couldn't be around anybody other than the owner. So uh, I know the results we've had up to this point are fantastic. We can only 
uh, share with you that it's going to be even better. If we've had great results from before, we're going to have fast, fantastic results as we move forward. So, Aldo, thank you for everything you do. Take I appreciate it, and uh, I can't wait to, to get started. Uh, remember, the webinar is uh, April 2nd, uh, and I'm just going to be – I can only touch – just the beginning, right? We're going to talk about the beginning. We're going to tell you how you can get involved in the early stages and become part of this process. Um, but uh, just be there if you are interested in being a good dog trainer, being a smart dog trainer, and also make some money at it. And uh, if, you're, if you're not interested in that, then don't show up because uh, we don't want anybody that's not interested in success. All right? That is it. All right, Aldo. Thank you. The, the, the life is giving us one opportunity. Don't lose the opportunity. That is the time. Thank you. the mic, but I didn't want to drop it for real. All right, that's it. See you guys.